I'm going to be removing every single team that wins the Stanley Cup from the NHL in this video, which means if you win the Stanley Cup, good, that's great, but you are not going to get a shot at repeating as you are going to be removed entirely from the NHL. So we can see some new teams go on and win the Stanley Cup here in NHL 24 instead of having Tampa Bay and Colorado pretty much dominate the simulations as they are the two of the best simulating teams in the entire game. We should end up seeing some new fresh teams actually make some deep playoff runs and maybe even win a Stanley Cup. But without further ado and any more talking, let's go ahead and simulate and see who's going to take on the Stanley Cup in year number one and who is the first team to get eliminated here in NHL 24. But before we go ahead and simulate, if you guys do enjoy videos like this, make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications so I don't miss a single live stream or video that I put out. So at the end of season number one, the Toronto Maple Leafs are actually going to go on and be the best team in the entire league going 53, 22, and 7. They had 113 points followed by the Tampa Bay Lightning who do dominate a lot of my simulations. New Jersey was surprisingly up there. They're having a tough season in real life. Obviously, they don't have any goalies. Dallas was up there. Detroit was very good as well as Vegas. At the bottom, we have the Montreal Canadiens, San Jose Sharks, and the Pittsburgh Penguins. Man, Pittsburgh trade against all. They're literally going into a rebuild now with three older players in Crosby, Malkin, and Latang. Even a guy like Eric Carlson that they literally just picked up last offseason. They're not going to be able to win with him, and I knew that coming into the year, but man, it's a sad downfall to see the Pittsburgh Penguins struggling the way they have. I honestly just hope Sidney Crosby has one more playoff run in him. Maybe he gets traded. Honestly, that'd be very cool to see. Maybe to Colorado. Team up with Nathan McKinnon. Nikita Kucherov is going to go ahead and lead all skaters in scoring with 111 points, followed by Austin Matthews who had 110. Connor McDavid always up there. He had 105. Kirill Kaprizov was good. Johnny Hockey had 101. Patrick Kane had 98 points. Now for the goal side, Matthews will lead with 60 on the season, followed by Kucherov's 57. Kaprizov had 54. Kyle Connor, 50 53. Miko Rantanen had 50, as well as Patrick Fortnite Line. A big season by him. I believe a career high in goals. Man, what a downfall for Line. Had 44 literally in his second season. Never got to that level ever again. It was a borderline 20 goal scorer. I have no idea how you could have a downfall like this in the middle of your prime as well. He's 26 years old. Shout out to him for also being a minus 30 for his career. Now, if we take a look at defenseman Eric Carlson and Charlie McAvoy are going to tie for the lead at 85 points, followed by Cam. McCarr, who did have 80. Josh Morrissey had 72. John Carlson was up there. Victor Hedman, who's struggling in real life, did have 18 goals and 68 points. So not a bad season by any of them. For goalies, Ilya Samsonov is going to lead in wins and break the entire record. He had 53 on the season. I believe the record's like 48 by Martin Brodeur. Jay Gottinger had 51. Vili Husso, 49. Vassy had 49. Vanacek, 48. Aiden Hill, 47. Now for the shutout side, Vanacek is going to lead with 8, followed by Aiden Aiden Hill 7, Freddie Anderson had 6, and a bunch of other goalies as well. Now, here is our playoff bracket for year number one. Obviously, we're going to go ahead and look and see who makes the Stanley Cup Finals. Then the winner of that, they are going to be stripped entirely from the NHL, never to return again. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have a very new and fresh matchup between the Minnesota Wild and the Carolina Hurricanes. So, I mean, they did load up in the offseason, or not in the offseason, at the trade deadline this season. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have a very new matchup between Minnesota in Carolina. Carolina in real life did load up at the deadline getting uh, Gensel I believe and they got somebody else. I cannot remember right now but let's see who's going to go on and win the Stanley Cup and be the first team eliminated from the NHL and in true Carolina Hurricanes fashion they are going to choke in the biggest stage possible in game 7 as they got dominated 6-1 to one over the Minnesota Wild or the Minnesota Wild dominated them as they are going to capture the Stanley Cup here in season number 1 and be the first team eliminated from the NHL. I definitely did not see Minnesota winning it first. I thought maybe Colorado, Tampa Bay, Toronto, the Rangers, one of those teams, definitely not Minnesota, but Matt Zuccarello is going to win the Conn Smythe. Nine goals and 33 points. That's an amazing playoff run for him as he's never been known to be an elite player. I mean, he was decent on the Rangers years ago. And Kaprizov kind of carries him now in the wild. Let me know in the comments below if Minnesota won a Stanley Cup. I don't think so. Here's their captain. I believe Jared Spurgeon coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the first time ever as Minnesota has become the first team ever to get eliminated from the NHL after winning the Stanley Cup. 
Now for the playoffs, Matt Zuccarello is going to lead with 33 points, followed by Kaprizov, who had 32, also 14 goals. Braden Point had 27. Nikita Kucherov had a hell of a postseason, 15 goals and 26 points. Your mom's a hoe had 25. Hagel, 23. Kucherov is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Matthews will win the Maurice Richard. The Norris is going to go to Eric Carlson. The Con Smythe to Matt Zuccarello. Vanacek is going to win the Vesna, and the Selkie will go to Connor McDavid. And then there was 31, as the Minnesota Wild have been the only team to ever get eliminated from the NHL after winning the Stanley Cup the season prior, at least to my knowledge. Now with the Minnesota Wild gone, the New York Rangers are going to end up finishing first in the entire NHL as they went 56, 21, and 5. 117 points. Toronto, again, had a very good regular season. They won 50 games. Colorado won 51. Buffalo was up there with 50 wins on the season. No way. Buffalo has literally not made the playoffs in almost 20 years at this point. Ottawa was up there. Boston and Pittsburgh now at the bottom. We have the Arizona Coyotes, Chicago, New York, and Philly. All straight poverty franchises. I mean, outside of the Chicago Blackhawks. I mean, they won three titles in the 2010s. Hunter McDavid is going to go ahead and lead everybody in scoring with 114 points, followed by Dry Settles, 109. Kale McCarr had 108. Jeff Skinner had 40 goals and 100 points. Kucherov was up there ranting and had a good season. Stammer had 99. Now for the goals in the NHL, Ovi will lead with 55, followed by Kucherov's 53. Pasta had 50. Matthews, 50. Paul Caulfield and Tage Thompson had excellent seasons. McMalkin, oh my god, Evgeny Malkin, 44 goals on the year at 37 years old. That is crazy. Now for defenseman, Kale McCarr obviously is going to lead. He had 23 goals and 108 points, followed by Adam Fox, who had 94. John Carlson had 76. Eric Carlson, 74. Dalene was up there, as well as Roman Yossi. Igor Shosturkin is going to lead and wins with 50, followed by Vanacek's 38. Georgiev had 38. Now for the shutout side, John Gibson is actually going to lead with nine, three more than Igor, who came in second place. Igor is still probably going to end up winning the Vesna, though. 50 wins, and literally nobody even cracked 40 on the season. And here we go in the playoffs of year number two. Yes, the format has changed a little bit, at least the picture-wise, because we are now in franchise mode as I've removed the Minnesota Wild from the NHL, so no repeat champion here. We are going to have a brand new winner and hopefully brand new teams in the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have the New Jersey Devils up against the Winnipeg Jets. New Jersey already up 1-0. That's on my part, I guess. But let's see who is the next team to get eliminated and the next team to win the Stanley Cup here in NHL 24. And the Winnipeg Jets on the back of Connor Hellebuck are going to go on and win the Stanley Cup. I mean, Hellebuck in real life is probably going to win the Vesna. He's the favorite to win it at least. And he is going to lead the Winnipeg Jets to a Stanley Cup as they become the next team eliminated from the NHL. And I mean, in real life, they honestly might end up getting relocated because of their ticket prices or something like that. They're not getting a lot of fans into the arena, and Gary Bettman is having a great investigation on that already, of course, because he hates every single Canadian team. There it is, the Stanley Cup about to be raised in Jersey, but unfortunately not for the Devils. Instead, this team from Manitoba, Winnipeg, or I should say Winnipeg, Manitoba. I don't know why I said that backwards. Regardless, here's the best captain in the NHL, Adam Lowry, coming to lift the Stanley Cup for the very first time in franchise history as the Winnipeg Jets are now gone from the NHL forever. Damn, that was a little too dramatic for me. Not forever, just for this video. Jack Hughes is going to go ahead and lead everybody in scoring for the playoffs. He had 25 alongside Tyler Toffoli, who tied him. Toffoli's only an 87, but producing like a absolute superstar. Kyle Connor had 12 goals and 23 points. Jesper Bratt was up there. Shifley had 21. Nico Heischer had 19. Connor McDavid is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. Ovi's going to win the Maurice Richard. The Norris to Kale McCarr. The Con Smythe to Kyle Connor. Igor Shosturkin will end up winning the Vesna, and the Selkie is going to go to Ryan O'Reilly. Also, let me know in the comments below who do you guys think is going to go on and win the Stanley Cup this season? There's many great teams. A lot of teams have loaded up at the deadline also, so should be a very good playoff run. Hopefully we have some good matchups. I know Toronto is unlikely to get out of round number one. They either got to face Boston or the Florida Panthers in round one. That is almost a guarantee at this point. I checked the standings a few days ago. So that is a very tough matchup for them. Honestly, my pick has been since the beginning of the season, the Edmonton Oilers. I believe this is Connor's year to carry them, not carry them, but to go on and win the Stanley Cup. I think it's the Oilers year, boys. Now at the end of the third season, again, Toronto is going to be the best in the entire NHL, finishing first at least, going 54, 23, and 5, 113 points, followed by the Ottawa Senators, who had 51 wins. Columbus 
Columbus was up there, the Florida Panthers, and the New York Rangers. Now, at the bottom, we have San Jose, who, of course, is one of the worst teams, if not the worst, in the entire NHL. Them and Chicago are pretty close, honestly. Philadelphia was bad, as well as Arizona. And the LA Kings, good. Screw LA, the most boring team in the entire NHL. You guys are just trapped the whole time and are literally petrified to forecheck. I do not want to see another LA and Edmonton Oilers playoff series, please. All they do is trap and play boring ass hockey. Austin Matthews will go ahead and lead everybody in scoring. That's never going to happen in real life, but he had 113 points. Mitch Marner had 110. Zabinijad, 108. Artemi Panarin was up there. Pasternak had 102. Elias Pedersen, 101. Only 32 goals, so a little low for him. Speaking of goals, who is going to lead? It's going to be Mika Zabinijad with 55 on the season. I don't think I've ever seen him lead the NHL in scoring in this game. Patrick Laine have 53. Matthews 52. Ovi had 46. Pasternak 45. JT Miller was up there as well as Bedsy. So I guess this pretty much confirms that Patrick Laine is a better player than Austin Matthews. He had one more goal than him this season. For defenseman, Kale McCarr is going to lead with 91 points, followed by Adam Fox, who had 88. Roman Yossi had 77. Morgan Riley was up there. Still not a top 5 D-man in the NHL. Quinn Hughes only had 14 goals and 75 points and was a minus two. Holy hell, Morgan Riley was a plus 63. That is insane. Ilya Samsonov again is going to lead in wins this time with 44, followed by Corpus Salo is 42. Vili Husso had 39. John Gibson, 38. Now on the shutout side, Husso, Ottinger, Freddie Anderson, Allmark, and that guy who's not going to be named all had five on the season. So who would the shutout? I mean, there's not really a shutout leader, but I guess the Vesna is still going to end up going to Samsonov. And here's our year number three playoff bracket. Let's simulate a long season who makes the Stanley Cup Finals and see which team is the next to get eliminated entirely from the National Hockey League. And well, despite the fact that this is a bit of a different screen, we do have the New York Rangers up against the Carolina Hurricanes in the Stanley Cup Finals. So let's see who will go on, win the Stanley Cup, and will be eliminated from the league entirely. And the New York Rangers are going to clutch it out in Game 7 again, our third straight Game 7 here in the Stanley Cup Finals as they will go on and beat the Carolina Hurricanes who also lost in season number one to the Minnesota Wild. So back to back, well not back to back, but so far in the video, two times they have lost in the finals, choking it away in game seven on home ice. Actually, I think it might've been on away ice. Regardless, it does not matter. And there it is, the sacred Stanley Cup. About to be raised to the New York Rangers as they are the newest team gone, booted out of the entire league. Here comes the captain, Jacob Truba, coming to lift it for the very first time in his career as the New York Rangers are not only Stanley Cup champions but now they are going to be i guess an american hockey team as they are no longer allowed in the nhl somehow tavo teravainen is going to lead the entire playoffs in scoring with 31 points only eight goals but 23 helpers artemi panarin had 29 zabinajad 27 kevin hayes was up there with 10 goals and 26 points very odd top of the nhl for the playoffs at least this season matthews is going to win the ted Lindsay, art ross and hart trophy zabinajad is going to take home the maurice richard the norris will actually go to morgan riley the con Smythe to artemi panarin the vesna to samsonov and the selkie will go to alexander Bar off. So the Carolina Hurricanes are back for more as they are on a revenge tour after losing twice in the Stanley Cup Finals, winning 55 games, finishing first in the entire league. Followed by the Boston Bruins, Edmonton was up there, Vegas was good, Tampa Bay and Pittsburgh at the bottom. We have Nashville, LA, San Jose, and the Islanders. Connor McDavid will end up leading everybody in scoring with 110 points, followed by Braden Point, who had a very good season, 33 goals and 109 points. Kucherov had 107, Stammer 107, Nathan McKinnon was up there. Marshawn Dreisaitl had a good season. Now on the goal side, Svechnikov is going to lead with 58. Followed by Ovi, who had 54. Matthews had 53. Kucherov had 50. McKinnon's always good. McDavid, Rantanen, Cole Caulfield. Kale McCarr is going to end up leading all D-man in scoring with 81 points. Followed by Dougie Hamilton, who did have 80. And 34 goals as a defenseman is pretty crazy. No doubt that is going to be a career high for him. Not even close. Eric Carlson had 79 points. Quinn Hughes was up there. McAvoy Burns. Now let's take a look at the goalies. Freddie Anderson is going to lead in wins by 10. He had 44. The next closest would be Vassi at 34. Stuart Skinner also at 34. Now for the shutout side, Ukapeka Lukanen, Freddie Anderson, and Alexander Georgiev are all going to tie at six apiece. And here we go yet again. This is our year number four playoff bracket. So let's see who goes on and advances to the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have the Boston Bruins up against the Colorado Avalanche. Boston already up one. 
nothing in the series, but let's find out. Let's simulate and see who is not only going to go on and win the Stanley Cup, but who is the next team that's going to get removed from the NHL entirely? And the Boston Bruins are going to pull off a LeBron James in the finals as they come back down 3-1 to the Colorado Avalanche, and they're of good I guess, I guess they got rewarded by winning it on home ice here in Game 7. Those, this is the fourth straight Stanley Cup final matchup that went to 7 as the Colorado Avalanche absolutely fell apart in the finals. I mean, they were up 3-1. Literally, all they needed was one victory. And there it is, the Stanley Cup finally being raised in Boston for the first time since 2011. They made two finals after that and lost both of them. And I believe 2013 and 19. And here comes Captain Brad Marchand, the absolute rat. As the Boston Bruins have won the Stanley Cup and now are going to get rewarded by leaving the NHL and never to come back. So I guess good riddance. I'm definitely not going to miss them. I don't know if you guys will or not. That It's whatever, honestly. They are Lagan. David Pasternak is going to go ahead and lead the playoffs in scoring with 13 goals and 30 points. Followed by Brad Marchand, who had 11 and 25. Anthony Duclair had 24. Nathan McKinnon, 23. Rant had 21 and Makar 18. McDavid is going to win the Ted Lindsay, Art Ross, and Hart Trophy. The Maurice Richard will go to Svechnikov, the Norris to Kale Makar. David Pasternak is going to win the Con Smythe, the Vesna to Freddie Anderson, and the Selkie will go to Ryan O'Reilly yet again. So for the fifth and final season of the video, the Detroit Red Wings are going to finish as the best team winning 54 games, fought by the Vegas Golden Knights. Carolina was up there, Vancouver and New Jersey. Now at the bottom, we have the Nashville Predators, St. Louis Guns. I mean, Blues and the Tampa Bay Lightning who only ended up winning 36 games. Patrick Kane is going to go ahead and lead the NHL in scoring with 111 points, followed by Nathan McKinnon's 109. Miko Rantanen had 104. Fun fact, my grandmother actually used to have a dog named Miko. It uh, it died a long time ago, and it had diabetes. I don't know why I had to say that, but I just felt like I did. Leon Dreisaitl had 102. Alex Dabrink at 96. McDavid had 95. JT Miller was up there. Now on the goal side, Nathan McKinnon will lead with 54 tucks on the season, followed by Ovi's 51. Patrick Kane had 49. Svechnikov 44. Dabrinka was up there. Kucherov now for defenseman. Let's take a look here. Quinn Hughes is going to lead with 90 points. Eric Carlson had 81. Kale McCarr 80. Rasmus Stalin had 75. Thatcher Demko is going to lead in wins for goalies with 43. Followed by Huso is 42. And Freddie Anderson's 41. Now let's take a look at the shutouts here. Vili Huso is going to drop 11 shutouts for the entire season. He's 100% going to end up winning that Vezna. There's literally no competition for him whatsoever. That's hilarious because in real life, Detroit, I believe, lost six in a row and their goaltending has been horrendous the entire season. So here we go. This is our fifth and final playoff bracket of the video. Let's simulate and see who makes the Stanley Cup Finals. And in the Stanley Cup Finals, we have the Toronto Maple Leafs up against the Anaheim Ducks. Not a finals matchup that I thought I'd ever see, but here we are. Anaheim is leading one to nothing. I don't know why I keep doing that. Like, I've done that for pretty much every single season of this video so far. But regardless, let's see who's going to go on and win the Stanley Cup in the fifth and final season and I guess technically be the next team eliminated from the league. And of course, the Toronto Maple Leafs are going to lose in the Stanley Cup Finals to the goddamn Anaheim Ducks in six games not even seven like every other series in this video. They're literally just going to be the better team over a team like Toronto. And I guess it's fitting. I mean, Toronto is the choke artist of all choke artists. And Anaheim technically is the next team gone that has been eliminated from the NHL entirely. So congratulations to them. You guys can let me know in the comments below if you want to see a part two to this where I take all the teams that have already eliminated for these five seasons. And we do another five more in another video sometime. But if not, all good. But just let me know if you guys want to see it. Yes or nah. As Troy Terry comes and lifts the Stanley Cup for the very first time in his career. As Anaheim has gone all the way winning the Stanley Cup here in season number five. I actually completely forgot that Anaheim does not have a captain. Austin Matthews, surprisingly, is going to have a very good playoff run. 15 goals and 30 points. Zegras and Nylander also had 30. Mitch Marner had 29. Troy Terry was up there. Morgan Riley had a good playoff run. Nathan McKinnon is going to take home the Ted Lindsay, the Maurice Richard, and the Hart Trophy, while the Art Ross will go to Patrick Kane, the Norris to Quinn Hughes. Vili Huso is going to end up winning the Vesna Trophy, and the Selkie will go to Anze Kopitar. And that is going to do it for this video, boys. We have gone ahead 
head and every single Stanley Cup winner got eliminated the season afterwards so we did not have any repeats going on in this video. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see a part two to this and I can do another five years and see who else gets eliminated from the league. Also wondering who the hell is this that I'm on right now It is Connor Brown. He actually scored a goal last night for the first time and I think over like a thousand days something like that. His first goal of the entire season as well so everybody say congratulations to uh, Connor Brown for getting it done but I would like to say thank you all for watching boys and until next time don't be silly wrap your willy <laughs>